Hi right, everyone, Cody Don here. Welcome back to my lab. So today I've got 200 of these N52 neodymium iron boron rare earth magnets. They're a, a quarter inch wide and an eighth inch tall cylinders, but they're very strong for their size. Now I've been playing with these and I've kind of realized that they do behave similarly to, say, molecules. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but there are some similarities. Like when I push these together, you can see chemical reaction happened. You know, they get close enough and then they'll snap together. So it's kind of like I had some uh, polar molecules that uh, like to link up into chains. Or this would be the crystal structure here. So you got uh, cleavage on uh, this plane and uh, this plane here and a brittle fracture along this plane. You can see. <laughs> now if I uh, warm it up so this crystal you know the the molecules here the magnets aren't really moving around relative to each other so this would be at near absolute zero but if i warmed it up you know give it some energy start doing this you can see that i wind up with something that resembles a liquid they don't really get away from each other and they keep trying to connect into the form but then they get uh, moved around and they kind of slide around past each other now, if I stop moving around, they kind of line up back into their crystal structure, or the, you know, lining up like this. So that'd be like a fibrous crystal structure there. So, uh, doing a gas with this would be more difficult, because, uh, you know, I'd have to really shake them up to get them to come apart. But there is a way to do it, because these uh, magnets, they don't really uh, stick in any orientation other than one. So if they're in the wrong orientation, they'll repel. Now some molecules do do that. Uh, the orientation does matter in a lot of chemical reactions. But what I can do here is use the table to like hold them into a position, and now you've got something that actually sort of resembles a gas. I want to try making something. I've got some sheets of glass and some uh, aluminum spacers here. Let's uh, sandwich these between two sheets of glass. That way they're not able to uh, flip around and uh, join together like that. The sheets of aluminum here are uh, 1 8 inch uh, thick, so the same thickness as these magnets. So I will have to add another uh, piece of like paper or something to give them just a little bit more thickness so that the magnets are able to slide around without uh, uh, too much friction. Alright, so I'm adding in the magnets, as you can see, they're repelling each other. I got these ones here in the middle, they're being levitated. I love how they bounce. So I got about half of them in, and as you can already see, the space between them down here is much smaller than it is up here, just because the weight of all the magnets up top is pushing down and forcing these down here closer together. So it's almost like as you go up, you're increasing in elevation. If I put one in backwards, so this is kind of like adding, a, say, a boron atom to a bunch of fluorine gas. See, two of them have already like reacted with it. If I jiggle it around a little bit, see, I'll get a third one to react. So now I've got a trigonal planar molecule here, which uh, in this context is similar to boron trifluoride. And uh, if I shake it around, you can see it acts just like any other gas molecule in there. You know, it's just it's a little bit heavier than the others. In fact, if I work it around enough, you should see it starts to move down to the bottom. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a heavy gas, right? So it'll work its way down. But you'll notice it doesn't just drop straight down. There's you know, there's quite a bit of uh, force still pushing it up, so it actually takes... You know, it's got a slight downward trend, but it's not going to just drop straight through the molecules here. That's why gases are able to mix so well. Uh, they do sort of separate, but they don't separate a lot, especially if they're shaking around a whole lot. 
the gas molecules are going to be fully mixed. That's why if you mix hydrogen and oxygen together, they will mix rather than have the oxygen settle to the bottom. The oxygen will be more prevalent at the bottom, but it won't completely exclude the hydrogen. <laughs> All right, so I think I can get this uh, back out of there. This might be, hey, look, it actually bonded made to four. It's kind of cool. Now, <laughs> might be a little tricky. Looks like I can pull it out. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna keep adding them in now. Let's uh, finish off all the 200 of these. There is one problem with this model, and that's the fact that these molecules are not moving. In a gas, unless it was cooled to absolute zero, there would always be some motion. And even if it was to absolute zero. Uh, and also, if you cool the gas down that much, they would uh, come together and stick and form a solid or perhaps a liquid in the case of helium. Now, <clears throat> there is one way I could impart a little bit of motion. That's to bring a magnet nearby and just kind of flip the poles, kind of vibrate them. Yeah. In a gas, they're, they're constantly bouncing off of each other, and on average, the effect is kind of like a repuls repulsive effect. So this is sort of simulating that. So what I've got here is basically a simulated cylinder filled with a supercritical gas in which well, there's really dense gas, so gravity's got a strong effect on it. So now I'm going to take a piston and let's push down on this gas. Let's see what it had, what it does. Look at that, I can compress it. Now I give it a little bit of a vibration so that it sort of balances out. Yeah, friction's a little bit high here. And if I continue pushing down, hopefully this doesn't explode again, <laughs> I can get the gas to compress. See that? It actually gets really hard to compress at this point. I'm putting a lot of pressure on there and I'm having to hold it down with my fingers here. Let's uh, vibrate the particles again to get them all balanced out to where they should be. There you go, you see the average distance between them has now shrunk. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, let this come back up a little bit. Okay, now it's stuck. There we go. <laughs> Alright, and as I vibrate it, the gas comes back up out of there. So this actually kind of shows you why the speed of sound is dependent on the velocity of the particles. You see, if they're not vibrating around, I release the pressure, they don't move, right? They don't come out to fill the gap until I give them a little bit of a motion. Then they'll start to move. Can to... you actually do that behind it? Um, I can try. Then they'll move to fill the space that has now been given to them. <laughs> Might be easier just to kind of give them a shake here. And that is, of course, why the speed of sound depends on the temperature of the gas, not the pressure. So the vibration of the molecules that allow them to jiggle out and move into the space. It's not the, the pressure or the distance between them. That type of stuff doesn't really matter. And it does a little bit, but not a whole lot. This thing is a fun little toy. I might uh, put a top over this. So gas expands to fill its space, but it's not filling its entire space. What's up with that? Well, it's gravity that's holding it down. See, if I remove gravity... Oh dear. <laughs> uh, it's just, or, see, see, the gas is being... It's coming out of this. I'm not holding it down tight enough. See, if I remove gravity, it does spread out. See? And when you uh, go up in elevation on the Earth, the pressure decreases. You, know, you climb a mountain, the pressure goes down because the gas doesn't have as much pressure, as much gas on top of it. So 
climbing a mountain, you're probably going from like here to here, whereas up to here would be near space. So there we go. I've uh, jammed in another piece so I can actually fold it and shake it around. Oh, looks like that piece got stuck. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. It's a little uh, container full of my uh, simulated gas. It's kind of a fun little toy, really. <laughs> anyway, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.